areas of the US that do not have these centralized electricity markets, right, they do have wholesale trade of electricity, right, between generators and buyers, right, between utilities and so on and so forth. Um, and these are what we call bilateral markets. Okay? And um, these bilateral markets actually existed long before electricity deregulation, long before the PJM electricity market and so on and so forth. Um, and the first of these was actually, um, what was actually set up in the Western US in the late 1980s. It was called the Western Systems Power Pool. And it's actually still in place, right? So, so the, the market structure that was set up in the 1980s in the Western states is actually still used there today. Okay. Um, so uh, the way that, that bilateral markets work is that, um, that large volumes of electricity, so sometimes called bulk power, is uh, traded between uh, utilities, right, between buyers and sellers, um, at whatever price the two counterparties agree upon. Right? And how these trades actually occur is that um, potential counterparties actually call each other up on the phone. Okay, so, um, so I might be like Bonneville Power Administration and I could call somebody at SMUD, right, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, say, I've got spare electricity to sell, do you want to buy any? Okay. And, so, um, and so this is, and so the, the, this is basically how the bilateral markets work. Okay. And uh, sometimes the, the energy that is purchased through these bilateral markets is coupled with access to the transmission grid so that you could actually deliver the electricity. And so this is sometimes called firm energy, right? and as opposed to non-firm energy, uh, which is sold without uh, access to the transmission grid. Okay. Um, and so these, these bilateral markets still uh, exist today. Um, now, uh, a lot of the bilateral trading takes place over electronic uh, trading platforms. Okay. So people don't call each other up on the phone as much. Um, Instead, they might log on to, to some electronic trading platform, kind of like eBay or something like that. Okay. Um, but so the, um, w when, when we talk about, about centralized electricity markets, just uh, keep in mind that, um, that places in the U.S. that do not have centralized electricity markets still have uh, trading of electricity through these bilateral markets. So uh, in the, the mid-1990s, uh, California and uh, a handful of the mid-Atlantic states, which are, which, which is, uh, are called the PJM market, it stands for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Maryland, um, uh, they, as part of a sort of a broader uh, electricity market restructuring effort, set up much more coordinated, much more formal mechanisms for trading electricity. Okay. And the California model was a little bit different than the, the PJM model, but the, the big similarity that they shared was that rather than people calling each other up on the phone, there would be a centralized, um, uh, basically, exchange set up, right? Kind of like the, something analogous to like the New York Stock Exchange, right, or the New York Mercantile Exchange, where crude oil futures are traded. And rather than buyers and sellers trying to find each other by calling each other up on the phone, everybody would go to this centralized market, right, or, or, or would go to the centralized exchange. 